Hi there, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with my friend and co-host Jamie, and we have another Coffee Break episode where we are taking some of your questions and discussing them on the air. And we would love to hear from you if you're enjoying these Coffee Break episodes. We would really love to hear from you what the questions you have about prayer are and what are your concerns and um, just the things that keep you from from being more powerful and um, victorious in your prayer life. So if you have a question that you'd like to submit, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions and connect with us there. So today's question is from Kim. Hello, Kim. Thank you for being such a faithful listener. And her question says, how does prayer work if what we're asking isn't part of God's will or plan? Yeah. And when, you know, that's, I feel like that's a very foundational question about when we're talking about prayer. I know that that's my number one hang up when it comes to praying is I know God is powerful. I know he can do anything that he wants to do. I know he could literally move a mountain or make my computer levitate, but he probably won't. And, you know, but when it comes to other things that he might do, like healing or a new job or, you know, something for my children or whatever, um, my, my biggest problem tends to be how does it work if, if what I'm asking isn't part of God's plan or God's will. Um, the, the first verse that comes to mind that kind of um, helps clarify or, you know, kind of a litmus test um, for this is in John 15, 7 through 9, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Um. And, you know, it doesn't answer the question about what if something is not in God's will or in God's plan, but it does say that remaining in Jesus, this is Jesus speaking, and when we remain in him and his words remain in us, when his heart is ours and our heart is his, um, then he conforms our desires and our wishes to his own, and and that whatever it is that we ask for, um, would be to our father's glory that would be, you know, if we're asking something for God's glory, if we're asking something that will result in the gospel bearing much fruit, um, then those things are definitely in the category of, yeah, God's going to answer this prayer. Um, I mean, just because it helps clarify though, doesn't mean that it like, you know, totally answers the question of, you know, how do you know whether what you're asking for is in God's will or not? Um, so, um, well, yeah, because I can see cases where, you know, maybe there's a missionary praying for funds to come in for a motorcycle so that they can go to, or I know out here in Alaska, like a lot of missionaries have to rely on airplanes and mm-hmm. stuff. And so you could say, all right, God, I'm going to pray for this motorcycle or pray for this airplane. I know it's going to result in glory because I'm going to be giving you thanks when you provide it for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be using it specifically to share the gospel. But sometimes that motorcycle or plane doesn't show up, you right. know? <laughs> so yeah. I feel like, I feel like Kim, your question has two levels like we could talk about this totally in the theoretical and how yeah anytime you ask for something according to God's will we can be totally confident that we'll get it you know and there's a verse I think it's either James or or John first John I think it's James it talks about that you know no first John this is a confidence we have that if we ask anything according to his will he hears Mm us you know but that still doesn't negate the facts, like the anecdotal evidence that, yeah, sometimes you're going to be praying for something that from all, you know, from every vantage point is going to result in God's glory and he still doesn't answer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think we could talk about it on these two levels. And I think it's important to talk about on the two levels. There's a level of praying for things that you know are going to be within God's will, you know, like, 
praying for not a plane so that you can travel first class wherever you want to go, but praying for a plane so you can hop over to these Alaskan villages that literally have no other way for missionaries to get there. Um, <laughs> sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Pick it up, Jamie. Finish my sentence. I think that was no. No, I understand. Yeah, just when you're you're not praying for your selfish motives, you know, like in James yeah. four three, you're not praying for selfish motives. But when you're praying for something that will directly result in the gospel being spread, and mm -hmm. in our human understanding, seems like absolutely this would be. In Why God's wouldn't will. God? Why do wouldn't that? God do that? And yeah. still sometimes he doesn't. So right. I feel like that's just a whole other can of worms. So maybe we should stick with this question, the, the very specific of how does prayer work? This is Kim's wording exactly. How does prayer work if what we're asking isn't part of God's will? Right. So maybe we could just start with that and um, try to get at least some of the worms back in the can. Right. Well, I when I think of that, you know, I the first thing is, I think the first thing to remember is it does work. Prayer always works and every prayer is answered. You know, we talk about unanswered prayers with the idea that, you know, I ask for a plane, I don't get a plane, but every prayer is answered. Um, and I, I just, I feel like, you know, when, when the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words, um, you know, that, that God, our, our spirit and the Holy Spirit are, are in constant communion. And so I think even if we ask for something that might not be God's best, that desire gets to God. Like he knows our hearts. So the way that I picture it working is like if my child, my daughter's birthday is coming up and if she asks me for a unicorn, like she did. She asked me for a pet unicorn, a real live unicorn. And she was about to cry when I told her they didn't exist oh, in real life. Um, and I know that I can't give her a unicorn. That's <laughs> What a, kind of mother are you? A, impossible. B, it's just really, you know, yeah, impossible. <laughs> and C, they don't exist. So I, I know that, but I know her heart. And so... I'm going to give her a gift that's really cool and that's going to be the best for her because realistically, a unicorn would not be for her best anyway, probably. that They right. poop all over the place. It's very hard to contain in a small home. <laughs> would it be but, um, rainbow poop? That's what I want to know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great way to put it, though, is that let's say you're praying for something that isn't God's will. You're asking God for a unicorn. I could, I've never even thought about it this way, Jamie, until you started talking about your daughter and her birthday. But the fact, you know, so let's say she prays for a pet unicorn and you buy her some really cool unicorn costume and she loves it. The fact that she asked you for the unicorn showed you that, that that's what she would really want. Do you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. even asking for something that's not what we're going to get, I feel can can help lead our prayers in the right direction. Does mm -hmm. that sort of make sense? Yeah. And I have also found sometimes that while I'm praying for something, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes God will even change my request and my desire. So to carry the um, unicorn analogy a little farther, it could almost be like, hey, mom, you know what I would love for my birthday is a unicorn and it would be so fun because I could ride her to school and all my friends would love her. But you know what? It would also be super cool to have a unicorn costume. So maybe that would be a fun one, too. You know, and so even in the process of praying, sometimes you can start off wishing for and hoping for one thing. And I think the more in tune you are with the Holy Spirit, the more... Um, active he can be in reshaping your prayers just a little bit. I think that's really good. And I think one, a really good way to pray for something that you don't know if it's God's will. I mean, I think number one, ask, it doesn't hurt. You have not because you ask not, I think you still ask, but with the idea that, um, you know, if you're not sure if what you're asking is, is of God, 
ask him to shape your prayers. I think that's a really good way Mm -hmm. and be listening back. Um, I've just, I've, I've experienced and I know other people have said that God has answered their prayers in the most unexpected ways. These, you know, totally, maybe it didn't look like what they wanted, but he gave them something better that, that reflected the deeper desire. So, mm-hmm. I mean, just as I don't, I can't think of a specific, but like, for instance, if you know, you're praying, Oh God, I, I really want to marry this person. Please let me marry this person. And then God fulfills that need of your heart for a spouse or a companion with his best and not maybe that person. And that happened to me, you know, I prayed, mm-hmm. God, let me marry this guy and it wasn't God's best. And so the person that I ended up with was the fulfillment of that heart's desire. And it might not have been specifically the person I asked him for, but it was better. It was his best for me and for the big picture. So, you know, I, I don't know if that even makes sense, but just no, that idea is. of God answering a prayer that might uh, address a deeper desire than just the surface prayer that you're praying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we have Jesus's example in Gethsemane too, where he says, this is what I want, but not my will, but your will. Mm -hmm. I think it's always okay to at least start with what you want. And then at that point, God might shape your prayers and your desires in a different direction. Or at the very least, you can just, um, you know, kind of add that on. Mm -hmm. I want what you want, not what I want. Yeah. And I like... um... I just like the idea of looking around once you do ask and looking around to see the ways that God is, you know, working in smaller ways, maybe not answering that big prayer, but answering prayers around that prayer or orchestrating things around that Mm -hmm. prayer Um, and just seeing him at work in that situation. Maybe you're praying for um, your husband to become a believer and maybe he doesn't become a believer, but you see that he's, he got a new job and his boss is a Christian or, you know, someone gives him a Bible randomly or I don't know, just mm-hmm. things like that where you can see, I, I really believe that God wants us to see him at work and, and that he gives us these little, um, I have a friend that calls them God winks, like these little, like, Hey, I'm here. I'm with you. I've heard your prayer and I'm at work. I'm busily at work, even though you can't see me. Mm-hmm. That's neat. No, and, and I've, I've wondered this exact same question a lot of times, so I'm glad you brought it up, Kim. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Jamie? I think just that we don't know and we can't know, but we do know that God is good and that he hears all of our prayers and that he answers all of them in his way and that we can just have confidence in that. But you're not alone in asking that question because it's one that I, I wrestle with every day <laughs> too. Sometimes I wonder if you keep praying for the same thing over and over and over and God knows it's not like the best. Sometimes I wonder if he might just every once in a while say, okay, here you go. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, yes. Like the kid who pesters his parents so much for a unicorn. Well, maybe not a unicorn, but you know, (laughs) okay. Have a unicorn, you know, like here's a Guinea pig. Like, I know you're not going to like taking care of it. I know you're going to get bored. I know it's going to stink up the house. (laughs) Right. But sometimes you just need to learn. So maybe, and I don't know, I don't think that there is any biblical, answer to that question one way or the other but I do feel like sometimes we should be careful like if we're just kind of begging our heads off and not having that submissive you know this is what I want but not what I will but what you will like I wonder if sometimes God might just say okay here's what you thought you wanted (laughs) so I feel like it's always best to let God know what's on your heart, but to recognize that his ways are so much higher than ours. Mm -hmm. And he really does know way better than we do. Well, that was a fun discussion. I would love to, well, we would love to hear more of your questions and you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And again, we don't promise to have like the answers it's going to make it all make a hundred percent sense but hopefully we'll get at least some good discussion and food for thought out of it yeah we'll get the ball rolling (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
Um, and if you have not gotten your Praying Christian Women Scripture Journal, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash journal and you can get that. Um, I just wanted to end us with a word of prayer. God, thank you for this discussion and just for Kim's question. Um, God, we just pray right now that you would help us to understand better who you are and um, how we can pray more in accordance with your will. Um, and we just pray for the faith and the confidence of knowing that we can come boldly before your throne. We can lay our, our deepest desires of our hearts before you and you will hear us and you will answer us in your best way and in your best time. And we just praise you for that, God. And we, we just ask that you would help us to draw deeper in our relationship with you and, and just even um, become more powerful in our praying. And I just pray you would bless Kim today and, and bless her prayer life as well. In Jesus' name, amen.